Assalamu alaikum, bismillah rahman rahim. Uh, the title of my speech is The Business of Believing. God says in 56, 82, do you make it your business that you disbelieve? So I thought, hmm, that should not be our business. Our business should actually be the business of believing. So um, that kind of prompted me to talk about this. Uh, one of the quotes in this uh, book called Success says, you have to have your heart in the business and the business in your heart if you want to succeed. These are quotes for um, the achievers. So why do we work? To make money, to live, you know, have fun, do whatever we want to do. We want to get rich so we can do more of what we want to do, okay? Vacation, buy stuff, you know, more stuff. Things that we will enjoy, not things that will make us happy because happiness is the exclusive quality of the soul. But um, because we want these things, uh, we work, obviously, but there are two ways to work. We either work for someone or we start our own business and we work for ourselves. And we want to be successful so we can get this stuff. Um, as maybe most of you would know, uh, Aaron and I, we used to be um, uh, business owners. We had a smog station, um, which Aaron took care of 99.9% .9 of it, and I was the gopher. Um, but now things are a little bit different by the grace of God. We are realtors, and realtors are their own business. So people know us because, or they want to work with us because they know us. Um, Realtors are dime a dozen out there. Uh, luckily, uh, only 5% of them really work hard. The rest of them don't. So yeah, there are a lot of licensed realtors out there, but not a lot of them work. So that's kind of good for us, bad for them. Um, and it is work. It's not as easy as going to Trader Joe's and having your groceries rung up. You know, buying a house, it's very, uh, very, cumbersome or selling property basically but during this time I've learned a lot about um, running our business okay how to how to um, you know advance ourselves and um, I've also learned that uh, a good investment for future is owning property renting it out um, getting residual income. If you guys are thinking about it, come see me. <laughs> um, just a little bit of um, fun fact. If uh, during the downfall, um, after it started to pick up back in 2011, 2012, if you purchased a property in San Francisco, today it's up 83%. So that means... Um, if you bought a property uh, back in 2012 for a million dollars, today it's $1.83 million. That's the price. So it is a great investment in our, and it's not going to be that great right now, but um, that's because of the downfall. But I thought that would be a fun fact for you guys to know. Um, our area, it's great investment, but I'm going to get to what God says is a great investment. So back to building a business, real estate can be very competitive. And as I said, only 5%, thank God, are very active of all the realtors. Um, and one of our lenders uh, during this time, he uh, sent us, I mean, we get to meet a lot of people, uh, one of them lenders, because they always want our business. So. Um, one of the things he ended up sending us was a brochure that said seven ways to invest in yourself. Because after all, you know, we are our own business. And I started thinking, well, maybe we can apply this to the business of believing. So, just a disclaimer, when the unbelievers follow this model, by God's grace, they will be successful in this life, okay? But that's all they'll be successful in. 
and we can apply um, the same principles in our business of belief and make ourselves successful not only in this life and in the hereafter. The thing is that when we become successful actually in our business of belief, our worldly business will automatically be successful. <clears throat> So we have seven ways to invest in yourself, in our worldly business, and comparing it to our belief business. So we take a, they say take a class or a seminar. Great, you know, you want to better yourself, learn more. And we say go to Quran studies or conferences. How much have we learned today, yesterday? A lot. I know I've learned plenty, mashallah. Worldly business, read. Great. Yeah, we read about the industry, the market. Here, we read the Quran, the appendices, Muslim perspectives, so on and so forth. We better our understanding about what God tells us to do. We watch a video. Oh, guess what? We watch the videos. Wow. All right. Listen to a podcast. Listen to the audios. We're still on track. That's awesome. Join a group or organization. Hmm. What do we call this? We automatically becoming members of UCS, United Community of Submitters. When we become submitters, you know, we're part of this family. Okay? As submitters, we're part of a family, right? And we get a mentor, mentor, and for us, mentors are when we consult with amongst ourselves, right? Uh, we learn from each other, right? We have issues, we have, you know, we just talk to each other, try to learn from each other. And seven is to volunteer. They tell us to volunteer in different organizations, get your name known, yourself known out there. And here, the difference is we, vo we volunteer in righteous works because there are plenty of opportunities out there that if we want, it is not mandatory, for us to do it, but if we do do it, okay, we volunteer to do it, it's going to get us to fantastic places. And the eighth one, which I added that, was to implement what you learn. Of course, you take all these classes and just by itself, you're not going to be successful unless you implement what you learn. And same here, we practice, our practices we do as God says. That's how we implement uh, what we learn. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, point seven, where it talks about where God, where my uh, understanding of bettering our business is to volunteer in righteous works. Uh, 5:48. Then we reveal to you this scripture, truthfully confirming previous scriptures and superseding them. You shall rule among them in accordance with God's revelations and do not follow their wishes if they differ from the truth that came to you. For each of you, we have decreed laws and different rights. Had God willed, he could have made you one congregation, but he thus puts you through to the test through the revelations he has given each of you. You shall compete in righteousness. To God is your final destiny, all of you. Then we will inform you of everything you had disputed. Also, in Sir 23, we read, Surely those who are reverently conscious of their Lord and who believe in the revelations of their Lord and who never set up any idols beside their Lord, as they give their charities, their hearts are fully reverent, for they recognize that they will be summoned before their Lord. They are eager to do righteous works. They compete in doing them. Also in Surah 83, it, God says, its spice is like musk. This is what the competitors should compete for. So when there are opportunities to do righteous works, okay, this is what we should compete for. We all should be the ones to say, I want to do it. Okay? And... We don't have to, we know that God's uh, commandments, they're commandments because we actually should do them, but they're also recommendations because we have a choice not to do them, but if we choose not to do them, then we're going to suffer consequences. So 
But let's say now that we've completed these uh, eight steps, we're very successful in our, let's talk about the worldly life. Now we want to retire, right? Comes an age, you say, you know, I've had enough. I've done enough. I've made enough. I can go do what I want to do. When I want to do, I want to retire. Okay? So, and this would be fantastic, you know, obviously, but um, uh, especially if you have that residual income from, you know, other businesses or properties and whatnot. But this concept of enough cannot exist in our belief business, okay? Um, just think about it. I mean, these are the things that we sometimes have to fight within ourselves, or we may hear other people say, I've cleaned the mass shed enough, let somebody else do it, okay? Uh, I, I've already paid to charity enough. You still have, you can pay, it's not like you've You've reached your limit. You can. Ah, I've done enough. Let somebody else help this time. Um, I've paid for, you know, the rent of the masjid or what, you know, whatever righteous work, other work, other things are out there. Um, let somebody else do that. So yeah, I get, I'm, I'm sure you all kind of get the gist of it. I can guarantee that if we run our worldly business like this, we're going to run it right down a hole, okay? I'm not going to open my shop today. Let the guy across the street open his shop today, and I'm tired of it. I've done enough for one week, for one month, for a year. You take a break. You close down shop. If you do that, yeah, you'll be out of business pretty soon. And just, um, I mean, I was just thinking about this, and I don't know if you all agree or not, but let's just say that if all of us here, our level of belief is all equally the same, right? Everybody has the same exact level of belief. And on Judgment Day, we see that our ranks are different because somebody did clean the masjid maybe twice more than you did, or helped a little bit more in charity more than you did, you know? I mean, it would be such a bummer for me to stand there and see, wow, you know, if I had done just a little bit more, I could have had that higher rank. Um, so, we can never say that I'm done with the, with, with, I'm, I, I, you know, that I've done enough. The, when we say that, when, we're, when we've done enough, that's the day we've, we've departed, okay? And that's when God decides when we've done enough because that's it. But for us, it should always be striving. Do you expect to enter paradise without, distinguishing, without God distinguishing those among you who strive and without distinguishing those who are steadfast? Higher ranks for the strivers. Not equal are the sedentary among the believers who are not handicapped, and those who strive in the cause of God with their money and their lives. God exalts the strivers with their money and the li their lives above the sedentary. For both God promises salvation, but God exalts the strivers over the sedentary with a great recompense. Just imagine that. You know, God also promises salvation for the sedentary. So I can sit here and do nothing. I can just, you know, continue with my... Uh, contact prayers and observing these commandments, but not strive to do more, okay? And I will get my salvation, but the folks who will do more will be exalted. Oh, you believe you shall reverence God and seek the ways and means to him and strive in his cause. Better believers strive in the cause of God. Why shall you shall readily mobilize light or heavy and strive with your money and your lives in the cause of God? This is better for you if you only knew. Moments, believers, that's who we should strive to be. Become believers, get rid of our doubts. 
are those who believe in God and his messenger, then attain the status of having no doubt whatsoever and strive with their money and their lives and the cause of God. These are the truthful ones. Special honor. Um, God says, why do you not spend in the cause of God when God possesses all wealth and the heavens and the earth? This, uh, the special honor is here. Distinguished from the rest of those among you who spend before the victory and strive, they attain a greater rank than those who spend after the victory and strive. For God promises salvation. God is cognizant of everything you do. And the best investment the example of those who spend their monies in the cause of God is that of a grain that produces seven spikes with a hundred grains in each spikes. What did I say? 83% from five years ago? We're talking about over 700, 700 times more. Can you imagine that? So you invest a million dollars and God gives you back 700 times more at least. God multiplies this manifold for whomever he wills. God is bounteous, nowhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shabnam